Hi, everybody. Today, I'm so excited because we have Logan Schiff, who's a director of paid media at Ignite Visibility, a true expert on Performance Max. He has run Performance Max campaigns for many of our clients. He knows the intricacies about it. So today, you're going to learn all the things you need to know about setting up Performance Max, little details so it doesn't go wrong, how long you need to run Performance Max to see if you're getting results. Does it work for e-commerce? Does it work for lead gen? Should you be incorporating value-based bidding in your Performance Max? How do you set up the signals? It's going to be a great interview. Let's go ahead and jump in and talk to Logan. Okay, Logan. So what is Performance Max? Talk us through that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. It is a campaign type that covers the most ad types within Google ads. So it covers discovery ads, search ads, shopping ads, and display ad inventory. The main reason why Google is doing this is for replacement of shopping while also including all of their other ad types in one campaign type. So is Google now using all of their inventory for performance max? Does it go down to pretty much every network that they have? Uh, pretty much every network, yes. And who is performance max right for? Is it right for every client? Is it right for e-com? Is it right for lead gen? Yeah, so I would say that for when it comes to e-commerce, it probably is right for every single e-commerce business. Um, I'm not saying that it would perform for everyone, but I would say that you should definitely at least test it. Lead generation companies specifically, if they have and they know their margins and they know their values of their leads, I would absolutely recommend testing it and see how it performs. Obviously, shopping has nothing to do. You wouldn't have to worry about your ad showing up in shopping since you're not an e-commerce business, but um, it's definitely something that I would recommend testing, maybe a little bit of a lower spend than I would for e-commerce though. And so when it comes to performance max, it seems like one of the things that's important is to make sure that you give it the right signals so that it can refine the machine learning correctly. Have you found that to be important as well? When you're yes, absolutely. When you're first setting up performance max, making sure that you utilize your first party data as audience signals and putting that into your performance max campaign absolutely is pretty paramount in the initial stages of uh, performance for that campaign. So if somebody were to put in the wrong signals, for example, you know, maybe the signal was a, a conversion that actually wasn't their actual conversion, would that throw off their whole com performance max campaign results? Initially, it definitely can do that 100%. Um, because if you're putting in, for example, even like prospecting audiences within as a signal within the within the campaigns, that could throw off what the system is trying to do and when it comes to driving that ROI that most clients are looking for from this campaign type. When it comes to setting up your audiences for Performance Max, it seems like there's a lot of different ways you could go about doing it. Some people like to use more first-party data. Some might rely more on data provided by the ad platforms. Do you have any thoughts on how you like to set up audiences? First-party data is the way to go, especially since we're moving away from cookie-based uh, audiences down the line and cookie-based tracking down the line specifically. First-party data is king, um, in my opinion, and it is more accurate as long as you continue to update it in your, if it's a CRM or uh, you know any sort of system like that, uh, I would highly recommend using first-party. Now, if you for some reason can't use first-party data, like if you're in the medical field, for example, then utilizing third-party data is a good alternative, but you really want to try to use first-party data as much as possible. I agree with you. And when I was running some performance max campaigns, I found a customer list an email list, a YouTube uh, viewer list, people who had viewed YouTube videos, and then a YouTube subscriber list uh, were pretty pretty powerful sources yeah. of data for the campaign, and we saw some really good results. So if somebody was looking to get started in Performance Max, and you know maybe they're not ready to throw all their mm -hmm. budget in there, how do you kind of ease into it and see if it's going to work for you? So within any Google campaign type, you need to make sure that you have enough budget to be able to get garner the amount of clicks and the amount of engagement to see if you can actually hit the conversions. Because if you start, for example, the PMAX campaign at 20 or $30 a day, you might never hit your goal because you don't have enough. You're not giving the campaign enough data to drive the results you're looking for. At a minimum, I would spend about $50 a day. Day. I would recommend usually spending, you know, seventy-five to one hundred dollars at a minimum a day to see, so you can get enough data within the campaign and it can drive the results. Hopefully, that you're looking for. I've seen that when people are running over a hundred bucks a day, maybe five hundred bucks a day, eight, maybe eight hundred bucks a day is actually kind of the the perfect level yeah. for testing. And that you, but you also need to let it run for an extended period of time to see if it's actually going to give you the results. Do you agree? Yeah, no, I totally agree. And again, I, I think. 
like you said, five, like the more money you can put into the campaign initially, obviously, the, the more likely you're going to find out if it's working well or not working well in a shorter period of time. In my opinion, it really depends on the AOV of your product and how expensive your product is, how much money you have to put in. Obviously, if your product is extremely expensive, if it's, let's say, $1,000 on an average order value, or you know each product is worth $1,000, you're probably going to have to put more money in than $100 a day to actually see the results you're looking for, because you need that conversion data. But if you have products that are 20 bucks a day, which you know a lot of clients do, have products that even 10 bucks, 20 bucks a day, you can actually start it out at $100 a day, because you can then, it's, a, it's a less of a barrier to entry for conversion. So you know, 100%, I agree with you on that. And I think it's extremely important to understand your business and to understand what this campaign needs to have within it to be able to be successful. And how long is a good period to see if it's working? Is it a month? Is it two months? What makes sense to you? So it's a, that's actually a really good question. And I would say that it's a there's a different answer based on the type of business you are. I would usually recommend and when it comes to any campaign type, you you know launch it and you really test it for 90 days unless it's absolutely not doing well at all. Can you give us an example of things marketers need to consider before running performance max campaigns? If you're e-commerce, the only consideration is if you have the budget for it. The only thing I guess is also a consideration is if you have a feed. So if you need, I would not recommend running Pmax or Performance Max without a feed because the shopping portion of Performance Max is one of the most efficient portions of that campaign. So I that's one you know big consideration. The second thing for lead gen is in my opinion, I would really want to make sure that I have, I understand the values of my leads before I launch this campaign. Now, if you're working on it and you want to start launching it, and then you know you're going to get that information within you know a month or so, you can definitely do that and optimize to maybe a target CPA or something along those lines. But I know that in lead generation, especially if you're, uh, if you want to be if you want to set yourself up even more for success in Pmax, I would recommend doing value-based bidding and understanding what each one of your leads is worth. So value-based bidding, if you're going to be doing lead gen, and then you said it would be the second thing you would do for e-commerce. What would be the first thing? The first thing would be setting up, uh, you know, the initial uh, DSA and you know search campaign specifically. Um, that's my first thing. That's the bread and butter of Google. Um, but that doesn't mean, by the way, I work with clients that are, or work with uh, brands and clients that have ninety percent of their budget in Performance Max nowadays. It's just search is such bread and butter for them, or bread and butter for Google, and it works so well and is very efficient. Depending on what type of search campaigns you're running, that I usually set that up first. And are most of your clients spending more with Performance Max over time after you set them up? Yeah, after the initial testing testing phase. If in e-commerce specifically, we usually see that drive a combination of new acquisition and remarketing revenue. And unlike, you know, obviously branded campaigns that don't drive that new acquisition in a lot of cases. So I usually do have Pmax spend more because if our goal, let's just say for example, is a 400% ROI return on ad spend, Pmax is usually around there, specifically around the goal that my client wants and it's driving new acquisition. And then the other campaign types that are lower on the funnel help lift that return on ROI up so that I can continue to spend in Pmax because that drives a higher quality of conversion in a lot of cases. So when you're looking into analytics, what are some important KPIs that, that you're paying attention to when you're looking at a, a Pmax campaign? So actually, this is if you have value-based bidding, e-commerce and um, uh, lead gen are very similar. I look at spend. I'm going to look at uh, conversion value, conversion value by cost, which is return on ad spend. I actually look at the auction insights, the shopping auction insights specifically to understand what that looks like for my P for our Pmax campaigns. I look at you know impression share loss to budget and rank, and uh, CTR as well. Those are the main ones. It gets an understand. It gives you an understanding of how what, how your engagement metrics are, and then also gives you an understanding of how your conversion metrics are, and you can optimize to that. So, how do you kind of incorporate performance max into an overall digital marketing strategy? So that's a really good question. And performance max, in my opinion, is going to be something that's a very, fo a very big focal point into digital marketing strategy based on kind of what I said previously with it being able to not only drive, you know, middle of funnel and lower funnel conversions, but also drive that upper funnel conversion. Um, a lot of people that spend less 
I, I don't have a huge digital marketing budget. Usually spend initially in like, you know, a paid social channel and a paid search channel and they pick one and the other. And Pmax can help you. And what usually happens in the paid search channel is they start in the middle and the bottom of the funnel in the paid search and they go in the top of the funnel of paid social because they don't have the budget to spread across both channels throughout all of the funnel. So why Pmax is so important and why it's such a huge focal point is because you do still drive that new acquisition, but it's intent-based so that it's a little bit more efficient than some of the, those disruptive marketing channels such as um, display or discovery where you're not actually searching for something. You just see an ad come up. For Pmax, a lot of the time you're searching for something um, as it's showing a lot of the time in shopping and search. So with that said, there are a lot of things that you can do within Pmax to even push new customers even harder. There is a setting that you can actually implement where you can try to target new customers more often than just the re maybe the remarketed customers you're seeing. And then on top of that, um, you can also make sure that you're really uh, that dis you know that disruptive marketing, that top of funnel that uh, maybe paid social is focusing on. You can make sure that they you know don't lose you don't lose them within the funnel when they're searching for you after they see that ad and you know shopping that shopping ad shows up and you know the price you saw the image before and now you can buy it right away so that's why i think it's such a huge focal point in today's digital marketing and i think people should spend and lean into it more than they are now so when you're kind of talking to people about performance max you know what what haven't you covered that you want them to know as they're thinking about getting into it as they're thinking about trying it maybe for the first time in 2023 what are some significant things you've learned that can help people yeah. So there's a misconception by some people in the industry that Pmax is, you know, you set it and forget it, you launch it and it goes and so on and so forth. You can make a lot of adjustments to this campaign. And also you can make more, you can see more things in Pmax than you could see in smart shopping, which is now sunset completely. You, there is an insight tab. Now, is that insight tab as transparent as we would like it to be? Of course not, but it is way more transparent than smart shopping is. So looking at that insight tab and understanding the performance there is important. You could also look at your, it's called a listing group, and you could see how your shopping ads are performing based on the listing group performance versus how everything else, if you look at the total campaign. So that's a little you know nugget there that you can see specifically. Um, when it comes to Pmax though, don't be afraid of it, I guess. I think there are some people that are afraid of it because they believe Google is a, you know, this is the one campaign that, you know, is cannibalizing the rest of your campaigns. In some cases, obviously for shopping, it is. In other cases in search, there is a little bit of a cannibalization, but running them in tandem, running Pmax with search specifically, we have seen better performance in it. So don't be scared of that specifically and not run Pmax because you're worried about your search performance. I would definitely, definitely test this because you will be thankful that you ran it because your shopping performance will be better and you'll drive more new acquisition than you were you were going to previously in most cases. And then the last thing I would say is there are a lot of like new customer targeting settings that you can implement to help you drive new customers if that's one of your main goals. And if you're, if, but if one of your main goals is not, is, you know, you're not worried about that at the moment and you want to be as ROI positive as possible, you don't have to use that setting. It's not a setting that you absolutely have to use. And it's something that you can increase your target return on ad spend goals to make sure that you're showing your ads as, or you're telling Google to show your ads as much as possible in the things that are going to perform at the ROI that you need. And if you have a little bit more room, you could lower that target return and it could show in more places, probably most likely in display and discovery as well. Do you need videos in order to get started with Pmax? Everybody wants to know. The answer to that is no. The right answer to that is yes. Um, and the reason <laughs> why that's the case is because no, if you have the display images, Google will actually create a video for you that will show up on YouTube. Do you want that to happen? No, you don't. So what you want to happen is you want to have a YouTube video specifically that you have that you can put in there. So you're not having some mishmash video come out of your display images and showing up on YouTube without you even seeing it. And by the way, you can't preview it either. So it's not like you can see what they created for you. At least they haven't set that up yet. Everybody, this is Logan Schiff, Director of Paid Media at Ignite Visibility. Logan, thank you so much for being on today and taking the time to share some knowledge with us. We really appreciate it. No, thank you, John. I appreciate the time and I appreciate you, you know, giving me the time to allow me to talk about Pmax.